I'm here just looking for anything I'm always a sink and swim Hold on to you so now Memories coming down Everything's pouring out It's leading into this round You were just listening to Feeling Low, one of the singles off of Sunset Ave, the latest EP by Vancouver-based pop punkers The Fallaways. The Fallaways have been together for a few years now, having released their first EP Skittish in 2017. Since then, they have undergone some lineup changes. Most noticeably, the frontman Jay has put down his guitar to concentrate on singing and fueling the crowds at shows with energy and witty banter. Now they are a five-piece band and in late July released their second EP, Sunset Ave. Aside from just being a kick-ass collection of songs, something I love about the EP is that Zach Carper, frontman for Cali Punkers Fiddler, of which I'm a mega fan, had a helping hand on a few of the tracks. I first came across the Fallaways when they did an Instagram takeover on Sideways this summer, and I got to do a live interview with Jay and Dan, as well as really getting to know them when sifting through all the footage they sent me for the MTV Cribs-style tour of their house. What makes this episode unique is that it's the first podcast interview I did with an entire band. I warn you, the quality of this one isn't the greatest, uh, as the whole band was sitting around one laptop, and so some of the members are a bit quieter than others. Also, this is a long episode, so I'll be posting it in two parts. Part one is more chit-chat and just chatting with the band and each member, finding out what they do inside and outside of the band, and part two is all about the band and the music. Here's my chat with the Vancouver Rockers, The Fallaways. Yo. What's up? What's going on, man? Can you hear me okay? I can. I got uh, most of the boys here with me. There's Dan, Josh, Riley. I don't think you've met Riley yet. What's going on, boys? How's it going? Yeah. We're uh, we're living the dream. It's really hot in Vancouver right now. In the heat. It's Not like, a good time. Not a good time. 30, 30 <laughs> degrees to be specific. I like it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whatever right you, know, you find something. See, what, what Josh doesn't understand is we're landscapers. So we're outside <laughs> all day. <laughs> all right, it's yeah. hot in front of you. <laughs> So we're pretty much going to go over a lot of what we talked about in the live thing. Yeah. But we could swear and we can, not that we weren't swearing before, but. I was swearing a lot. A lot more than I should have, probably. The girl Ben was in there and he was asking me not to, but. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh man, we're going to talk about Ben too. I, I need to know more about this kid. He is such a legend. <laughs> what a little character like that. Yeah, I stumbled upon his interview with you and I was just like, who is this guy? And I just watched all of his stuff. I can't stop watching his stuff. He's so, so good, good, right? He's, good. So He's so good. Yeah. So like, I guess, uh, I guess his mom writes all the interview questions yeah. and he just kind of like wings, wings it on script kind of thing. Right. Uh, uh, like, yeah, yeah, he's done some pretty crazy bands. Like, I think he did, like, was it Red Theory or Hell Yeah or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Um, he did, like, Broken Love. They're from Toronto. I'm sure you know of them. But uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, like, he really, like, gets to know, like, they obviously do a lot of research about the bands. Like, I don't think we've ever had an interview with somebody that knew as much information as he did, which is pretty I crazy. Mean, uh, right, yeah. He's like a little Mark Marin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Daniel, he had some, some funny things to say, just like the uh, oh, Joe he, thing and doing that kind of research. The yeah, puppy. he definitely oh. roasted me a few times, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's not healthy to eat so basically, out of the bucket. <laughs> basically, you want to be Billy Joe Armstrong, but you can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, just a little savage. Yeah, the hairline doesn't allow it. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he's good. So, uh, yeah, you guys had a hard day at uh, at work today. I saw your story. You said you were taking a nap about two hours ago. <laughs> yeah, well, we like, okay, so Daniel and I, uh, we've been working because we've been going out to the boss's lake house on the weekends. So I think yeah. we were on day 16 straight. Yeah, yeah, not much. And, and uh, so like, we've been absolutely destroyed by the heat lately. And then coming back from the lake house, usually it's a bit cooler in Vancouver, but it's just been so hot this week. And we're, so humid. we're all like sunburnt and stuff on Monday. I think we got home around like 1 a.m. Yeah. And it's just like, it's been, it's been nonstop, man. So like today we had a little bit of time, but we basically got to my house after work and started doing band interviews and like phone calls and stuff like that. I squeezed a little nap in there. Man. Yeah. He got like a 20 minute nap in there. But... Woke up with a hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who else were you interviewing with today? 
Uh, well, we were just like basically like setting setting some schedules for interviews and stuff like that. We had a phone call with our manager because we're working on a record deal right now. And there's yep. just like, there's so much stuff on the back end. Like, it's like you work towards this record deal your whole life. And then you're just so excited for it to happen. And as soon as it actually like, presents itself, the amount of stress is out of this world, dude. Like, <laughs> there's so much shit that I have to figure out in the next like two weeks. It's, it's like getting your dream job. It's like getting your dream job, but it's just a lot more a lot than you wanted it to be. Yeah, a lot, a lot of red, red tape. tape. When is that announcement coming out? about uh who you're signing with um honestly i think it kind of i would say within the month oh shit that's so exciting like, it's yeah it's pretty crazy um i still can 16 year old me like with the whole okay so there's like the signing and then we're working with the producer and a mixer that are kind of like pretty out of this world for us to be working with because like 16 year old me would be like screaming yeah i don't know I'm like screaming, but inside, you know, I've learned to contain it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Are you allowed to uh, divulge who your uh, producer is going to be? Not yet. Nothing, eh? Shit, this is like all. Not yet. I know. Damn. It's hard for me, Frankie. <laughs> you can see everybody out of frame is like holding holding their breath. Yeah, we're all just like, <laughs> ah! I want to I say so bad. Yeah. But, okay, so we've had barbecues at our house where like we've had like, our, a couple of our close friends to just like play some of her set and like not telling them all is so difficult. I've right. never like, I've never had to contain something so much in my yeah. life, but it's just going to be so much better when we announce it. So yeah. Oh, for sure. Keep it on the DL. All right, cool. So we, we, uh, who do we have from, uh, from the band? So we have, you said almost everyone. We have almost everybody. Everyone. So we got Daniel. Sup Daniel. Hello. What Hello, do you sir. play? What do you play? I play the bass for guy. Okay. So then we got Josh. I'm the drummer. I sing. I'm Jay. We got uh, Riley. I play guitar. And we got Dev. I play guitar too. I guess Beauty. it's probably more effective if I don't even move the camera. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's all the audio. Don't even do it. Yeah. But uh, cool. yeah, we got all the boys here. I think this is the first, the first interview where we've had all five of us. Coordinating oh. five grown yeah. dudes to do something is <laughs> yeah. impossible, man. That water. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I think in the live interview, we definitely got that uh, that you and Dan do landscaping. Yeah. Joshua, they kind of bastardized what you do. They're like something with metal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does That's basically, yeah. Some shit, yeah. Uh, I feel like, yeah, uh, welding and we make like uh, staircases and ladders uh, just for any building. Like we were working on a hospital the other day. We were working on um, uh, just homes and stuff like that too around the area. Oh, cool. Yeah. Sweet. But yeah, I do welding and make pieces with metal. Yeah. Okay, so they were mostly right. So metal work. Yeah. Metal work. Make me a sword. <laughs> make me a sword, brother. Cool. What about uh, what about Riley and? Bro, we got Riley. Uh, I. I'm a musician. <laughs> I work at Long and McQuaid right and I on. teach guitar. And then Dev? Yeah. I sell power tools and power tool accessories. <laughs> <laughs> and he's damn good at it. <laughs> Woo! And that's how I sell cool. power tools. <laughs> Wicked. That's tall COVID. What exactly were you guys doing when everything started going to shit, like uh, in terms of the band? Um. So we kind of had... Good when everything show. went to shit, I think was like go release. Nope. No, it, we were stoked because we had so much shit that we could drop. And right, stuff. right. So basically, we had three songs left, four songs left to release from the EP. At that point, there was only two songs from Sunset App that were out. Um, so in that sense, we were kind of like blessed in the fact that we could release some mm -hmm. singles and keep people interested. Um, but right before COVID like really got crazy, we played one last show on March 13th oh, yeah. in Vancouver, which like we managed to get like a Skin professional, we managed to get like a professional film crew and like audio crew to like get it all recorded and edit it and like make some awesome live videos. So mm -hmm. we were able to like kind of release that a couple months into the COVID thing and like keep a little, a little bit of like a flow going with just like keeping people interested, I guess. But, uh. Was, it was elevated it's, on. it's worth noting that that show was like one of the only shows in Vancouver that didn't oh, wow. get canceled. Yeah, because yeah. honestly, we were like, it was, it was, the yeah, it was probably the biggest show that still went on because yeah. like it's a lot of tickets were sold for it, and I think 
maybe 50% of those ticket buyers like showed up like because it was like in wow. the middle of the shit storm yeah honestly and like, it was like it was like our show and then like some of my coworkers who are session musicians were playing like a gig at uh the railway club yeah that's about that's it. it yeah <laughs> and i know there's like a sleep circle gig or something yeah like yeah that too. didn't that get canceled i think they played it oh really yeah, yeah okay I did. yeah Probably. a couple couple small shows i think uh yes yeah, so- Steel Panther got canceled out. Yeah, it's the hard rock. No. Yeah. 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 Mike was going to go to that, right? Not Steel <laughs> Panther. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. I had so many friends call like, oh, see Steel Panther instead. I'm like, all right, dude. No, I'm you're not. Yeah, dude. That was, that was a really cool show, though. So there's like a, I think there's, is there three videos yeah. of that on YouTube yeah. right now? Friends From at the Wise Hall. Ways. And like, yeah, I don't it just turned out really good. We had a rad film crew and then we got our buddy Issei who's done a lot of our music videos to like edit it all together and stuff like that. And yeah, one of the guys from the band got like the live stems for it. Yeah, so like the guy that usually mixes our records mixed all the live stems too and it sounds fucking great. Like I was so happy with how that turned oh, out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so check that out on YouTube. Tight as fuck. Right, and then, um, you know, COVID still, uh, Still fucking things up. I saw you guys had to cancel a show that you had lined up in, in August. Yeah, so it was like, we got the invite to do it, and it was like a precautionary thing right off the bat. Like, we were like, okay, if things don't, like, get worse, and, like, the rules are all in place at the venue and all that stuff, then, like, it, it's it's a possibility. You know, at least we can get one show in during the summer kind of yeah. thing. The problem with but, that uh, venue, it's, it's really notorious for, like, them to not give a fuck, and to have a lot of flack from doing that show it was just not worth it yeah so for, just, for where we're heading in the next month or so it's really it wasn't worth it for us to just kind of to go along with it because like you know it's a small venue there would be maybe 30 to 40 people there but if for some you know like it's still no, 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 no. <laughs> why are they finding a show all this? it's just yeah and it's a dangerous situation mm-hmm. like we just yeah. want to keep everybody safe and their precautions might not be up to stuff. Exactly. And that's kind of what we would figure because they don't really give a fuck as a venue. So I've heard. Yeah, they they certainly drink some minor shit. No so like, they're really terrible. So probably, don't want to put them on blast. We'll yeah, I don't want to put them on blast. <laughs> no, but, no, no. Look at that. Daniel's doing it. Daniel's taking them up. He's making some bread. No, it's just because I think it's probably sad. It's sad. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of sad. Were you guys just going to be playing indoors? Is that allowed again in, in Vancouver? Indoor stuff? Yeah. yeah, so it was like an indoor, like small, small bar, like yeah. fucking pretty small, man. Um, probably the max capacity when it's like open, open with how oh, cool wow. it would be okay. 70, I would imagine. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. Like, Maybe. because their limited capacity Maybe. was 40 or 50. <laughs> like, it's, it's small. Yeah, and that's like pushing it, right? So ideally, but, not the best idea. And that's kind of why we decided to pull out of it. But, uh, you know, like I just, I would rather a show be all hype rather than Definitely, a little bit yeah, of stress yeah. you know what i mean leading up to it being like fuck this could be a shitty situation but like we have to do it anyway right. it's just it's just not worth it how old is vancouver work i like in toronto right now there's no indoor anything happening anymore i think like we're only allowed to do uh patio stuff that's it they're trying to figure out how to do like some outdoor shows so we'll see really so, so that's like for live music like only only outdoor stuff Right. Oh no, that's for really? everything. Uh, like bars, restaurants, patio crazy. only. Crazy. Okay, well, I know there's still like like restaurants for us are open. They're at like half yeah. capacity normally. Uh, those are running right mm-hmm. now. I know there's still like bars that are open. I don't know if they're going full. Yeah. I don't know if they're going past midnight. A lot of them are like that, that's like the latest they yeah, can be open. A lot of hours thing. have changed. A lot of hours have been cut from businesses. Um, and then for like mm-hmm. live music, I know there's a couple lounges that'll have like a couple acoustic duos or whatever in a night, but it's, it's pretty limited, but it does not sound nearly as like intense as what's going on over my, there. My uncle owns a theater. My yeah. uncle owns a theater out here where they do like a comedy theater kind of thing. And, uh, okay. they have like a, a large stage. It's called the Gilda- Giggle Dam Theater in Poco. And uh, they have a big stage where they put on like this dinner theater thing, uh, but they have a giant pla- like plastic drape in front of the stage. So it's like you're looking at them through plastic. plastic. Yeah, there's a lot of plastic in front. Oh, yeah, wow. like you can barely. Like, you're gonna write yeah, down they're all plastic and plexiglass. Like an operating room or something. Yeah. <laughs> They're almost like distorted because you can barely see. It looks like I saw only pictures, but it's like it does not look ideal. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, it's not the full experience. Right? <laughs> no, 
is yeah they, they go they go, go in the crowd and they sit on you and they make fun of you exactly like, yeah, yeah oh so you're like not even getting the full effect at all no <laughs> not at all no and they have flexible glass in front of every cash register. Yeah, it's like not, where I work. There's it's it's supposed glass. to be like a comedy club, but it's not fucking funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but isn't that kind of funny in itself? <laughs> yeah, yeah in a way, yeah. it makes itself back into a joke. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, so uh, before COVID, you guys, uh, well, you've toured across the country at the worst time of the yeah. year, and <laughs> you also told me that you told me about your bus, your really cool, uh, your really cool bus. That was probably also a bad decision to yeah. pay for. Well, where did you guys find this bus? Uh, we found it at a pretty sketchy dealership in Alder Grove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that. that's the best way that Alder I can put it. And we were like, let's do it. <laughs> well, the other one was $30,000. <laughs> so we could get one for six and a half or we could get one for 30. Or honestly, we couldn't get one for well, 30. Well, the other one that we test drove, like barely even made it out of the fucking driveway. <laughs> yeah, that one, that oh, one set the other Oh, yeah. Success. I thought I was going to take it down to Ecuador or something. Yeah, they had no brakes. I was like, bro, oh, like, this is not making it fast. Like, oh, no brakes. Yeah. The wife was just like, you're not doing it, man. Yeah. Like, you're not doing it. Um, yeah. I wanted more money for it, too. I think he did. No, it was, it was, it was like five k. I think. Yeah, it was like five or six. But um, but yeah, that's so we got it at some sketchy dealership, and we had it for like a couple, a couple pretty long distance trips before we actually took it like across mm-hmm. Canada. Yeah, because we took it to like Kamloops. We took it to Calgary, dude. We took it to Calgary, dude. We, yeah, Calgary. we did. Yeah. Yeah. That first time, <laughs> we slept in the parking lot. That was cold. We made it to Domino's one minute before oh, it wow. closed, then we stopped at Walmart. And and I, waited, in a wall, yeah. I waited until it opened so I could buy a blanket. And you bought me a blanket too. <laughs> yeah, I was freezing. Oh, man, that's I was love. Just, I was yeah, freezing. I was sitting on the bench just like, this, it's horrible. It sucks. It sucks. Honestly, like, wait the, until it opens. Like, I'm getting sleep. I'm honestly, honestly the nicest it. thing anyone's ever done. <laughs> I was, sitting, I was sitting like on the two chairs that are like across the bus, like so uncomfortable, dude. Like the chairs themselves are uncomfortable. Yeah. I was like wrecked back, like cold, freezing. My spine, chance. my skin, my skin. Damn, that just does not sound like my experience in the bus that was exactly curious. <laughs> We live life on the edge. <laughs> like, to be fair, to be fair, this yeah. is before we equipped anything in the bus. That's like right when we got the bus, and we're just I like, some that's, practices practices and that that's good. not yeah. equipped, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We like, had like, we had two one gun pop. We just like our old bassist Justin. Oh, yeah. the, uh, one of the one of the last nights of the tour, he fucking we got like the boys from the Redwoods in our bus, and like we're having a good time. And Justin's just like. I don't. He like he loved to send it. I love the guy. He was roughhousing himself. He was just himself. yeah. He was roughhousing himself and did like a flying elbow onto the mattress. He just popped it. <laughs> Where we sleep. Boom. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're sleeping on the floor, boys. <laughs> so so when you guys uh, when you guys say bus, what are we talking here? Like yeah. Uh... So it's it was a fifteen passenger, I believe. Handy dark gasoline powered bus with a hydraulic. You lift. fucking wow. nailed it, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with rotating parts. With rotating parts. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it was like a 90, I think it was a 94. Something like that, I think it was my birthday, it was a 94. Um, when we got it, I think the odometer said it was like 160 something K, yeah. but, but the uh, mechanic who worked on it realized it was like a million <laughs> over a million and like, re- <laughs> so like when we actually saw the bottom of the bus on its last day, we were like, Whoo! Oh, we're all like, I'm surprised we're here, boys. <laughs> and that's why all of them all of them <laughs> feeling low alive still alive let go the whole EP is about the bus <laughs> it's gonna pay for itself yeah realistically right? <laughs> in some way or another the budget did not balance itself <laughs> it's still waiting <laughs> so so when did it finally uh, kick the dust? Yeah. When did it finally kick the dust? Yeah. Um, okay, so we basically took it across Canada to go to Toronto for Indie Week. That's kind of what we planned the tour around because we had three shows in Toronto. Um, we made it there fine. I mean, like cold and s- scary in the winter. We made it there alive. We made it there alive. That's the best term. <laughs> yes, thank you, Devin. <laughs> and we left, we left Toronto and went to Sudbury for a show. And then, at, like, we were all Great sick. We were center. all sick at this point, like, like real sick. 
Sudbury had the best rec center. Not a good time. And yeah, honestly, rec centers across Canada, thank you so much. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so from Sudbury, I think we went all the way to Winnipeg. And it was like one of the longest drives. I think it was like 20 hours or something all together. Oh my God. And we ended up getting to Winnipeg. We stayed the night there and we went to a Cora's breakfast place. Fucking shout out Cora's. <laughs> love that shit. Um, <laughs> seriously love that stuff. And the guy that was like our, on the road with us, our buddy Kurt, and he's kind of like helping with roadieing and all that, all the shit. He didn't own the bus at all. Yeah, he didn't own the bus. And he was like at Cora's. We were all eating breakfast. He's like, I can't really afford breakfast. I'm going to go chill on the bus. And we're like, all right. He comes back 10 minutes later and he's like, the bus won't start. And it never started again. That was it. No. Yeah, we got like three different BCAA trucks, like two tow trucks. One tried, tried to open tried it. To start it. Um, tried to try to start it and everything. One and then second guy was like, I can't tow this. So then we go to Canadian Tire, try and get a battery. So I carry the battery from Canadian Tire back to the to the parking garage. That didn't work. So we get another tow truck to bring it to Canadian Tire and we get it there. Whoa. And then the guy that oh, that's running the shop says, I can't work on it because I don't have a lift. So they push it out with a forklift with the parking brake on. <laughs> and I'm just like, what are you doing, dude? And I, I made sure I got my dis- my uh, return for the battery because that was that was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and then the that. biggest legend, the, the guy that follows us. Yeah, this guy follows us on Instagram. He brought his tow truck to bring it to Shaw's auto body. And he works on like military vehicles and stuff. And the guy that towed our, our vehicle was just like, I'm going to make sure I go slow so your gear's all good. And he was the biggest legend. This was probably after <laughs> six hours of trying to sort this. I was asleep in a hotel room because I was, like, sick. I was on my deathbed. <laughs> and these boys were out in, like, minus 30-something. Like, I bought gloves and sex for Frankie, it was cold. It was cold. <laughs> I remember when we got the phone call about the bus never being able to start again. We were at the mall. Yeah. And we were all we all got outside, and it was so fucking cold. And it was, like, a 20-minute walk to the shop. And we were like, should we cab? And all of us were like, we're, we're dead inside anyways. <laughs> <laughs> And we sold the part, or we sold the bus for parts for 200 bucks, and we carried on. Yeah, he okay. tried to sell me a Volvo, and then we just went yeah, on yeah, like dodged a bullet. You dodged a <laughs> bullet. Yeah. And Kurt, Kurt went home on a plane. Yeah, Kurt wow. left. He was like, I've had enough of this. I can't do it anyways. <laughs> I'm out of here. He's the reason we all got sick, because he came on the trip sick. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> then, yeah, there, there was a lot that went on, no, but you know, learning experience. Awesome. Kurt's the only one that got laid on our bus, so I guess props to you, buddy. Oh, yeah. good for him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Silver lining. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the bus is swinging and goes without saying. <laughs> so, what did you guys spend that uh, two hundred bucks on? I don't know. Gas. Yes. <laughs> anything. Anything we needed. Rental car. Self esteem. Rental car. Self esteem. Gas. Like Cheetos. Timmy's. <laughs> probably gas. Tissues to wipe our tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jars to catch your tears. At the time, smokes, gas, or Timmy's, I think. Okay. Because that's what we were living on. I'm going to be honest, Frankie. I don't think I, I cashed that check for a long time because I was just like, this is fucking depressing. He pinned it on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> like a, you have 200 bucks? <laughs> yeah. Yo, 200 bucks moment. right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro! <laughs> so, okay, aside from the bus breaking down um or dying completely i'm sure you guys must have like a lot of fun stories from just like tour life like just crazy things that happen on tour give me one like top of top of mind okay okay one of my favorites this is like fuck i love this story frankly i'm getting so amped up let me have a sip of my beer first. <laughs> <laughs> all right have I, have I heard this story or are we, are we maybe i'll try to tell it as good details i can so once we left alberta which is i think day two of the tour we ran out of pot. And this was right around, this is right around when like Canada was legalizing weed. So like there's a lot of places getting shut down and then there wasn't a lot of legal places open yet. So like mm-hmm. finding weed was really difficult. It was hard. So I was actually like searching on Instagram for some dude in Thunder Bay and like we almost <laughs> had it. We almost made it work and it didn't happen. Anyways, from Alberta all the way to like Ontario, I believe we didn't have pot. And it was stressing us all yeah, out. Well, <laughs> and like, yeah, we didn't plan for it. So like shame on us. But as we're going through Ontario, um, we took like the northern route through like, Wawa. Through this place called Wawa. Have I you know ever heard Wawa? Of Wawa. Yeah, dude. Ah, Wawa. Is that the place where we actually gassed up? I believe so. Yeah, the one okay. town. Yeah. yeah. So 
we're waiting for this gas station because it's the, the only gas station for like 300 kilometers or something course, ridiculous. Yeah. And because it's like some turn off on the dirt road. It's some turn off to like a dirt road. And like, we're, we need weed at this point. And, and we're, dark. we're so defeated. We're like, this is like literally the middle of fucking nowhere. Everyone's all <laughs> So like, nobody's got, nobody's got any hope there's going to be any pot here. Cause like, it's literally, like, we're going down this <laughs> road <laughs> and there's not even like an illuminated sign. Cause usually there's like a sign that's bright and you can see it, right? It's open. <laughs> um, and then as we get like closer, we're like 150 meters away. Literally right beside the gas station, we passed like a bunch of forests, and there's like this sign. This plate, this building was put up literally the day before. It's like a trailer. It's a trailer <laughs> on like on a native reserve land, and it's a dispensary. <laughs> it's like, oh, and amazing. we're just like well, one thing. It's just like this illuminated sign at like 11 p.m. and we're just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they opened the day before. Oh, the day my before God. they had that uh, THC infused THC infused smoked salmon. Like, yeah. They, they had shattered, they had it all. Oh, we shit. Hard after after, after that drop-off, we were, it was the chillest leg of the journey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody was just, like, super quiet on the trip. They're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm baked as a snake, bro. Don't talk to me. Like, <laughs> did you guys, did you guys uh, try that THC-infused salmon? The one, uh, yeah, right? It was, it was super weird, but it, it got you high, which is cool. Yeah, it, it, um, as we're leaving... Did you get some? Yeah. I had, I had to get it. Uh, like yeah. if you, yeah. if you, if you saw that, that right? you yeah. didn't try it. I mean, of course. Okay. 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 Moving on. Moving on. We leave the dispensary, and uh, we're at the we're at the gas station. We buy fireworks at the gas station because it's like it's like a place where nobody really gives a fuck. So I don't know like how legal that was, but whatever. Uh, great. We're about to leave, and we're about to get back in the bus, and then all of a sudden we hear like a. And we look to, to our left, and it's literally just a fucking horse <laughs> with a carriage. <laughs> the carriage. <laughs> and our roadie Kurt, a roadie Kurt, like looks at us and he's like, You gotta get me out of this one horse town, man. Fucking <laughs> 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 glorious. I love wow. that shit. That's <laughs> that is so wild that this whole happened in Wawa. I, uh, I actually work with a guy who's from Wawa. Which I really? He's the only person I know from Wawa. I <laughs> yeah, does he own a horse? <laughs> <laughs> His dad still lives there. His dad might own a horse. He's a Hungarian. <laughs> a Hungarian man. That's the guy. <laughs> 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 One horse down. Oh, like, that is so good. Where are you guys all from originally? You, I, I think I heard in your interview with Ben that you're from a small town. Uh, Jay specifically. Uh, okay, me personally. <laughs> Born in Switzerland. Oh, no way. Exotic, I don't see. Uh, immigrated to Canada, up northern BC. is where my parents live still. It's a little town called Burns Lake, BC. They have, like, the longest surviving bakery. Yeah, they got a fucking... They, they own a bakery, my parents. Okay. Um, so that's where I moved to when I was five years old. And then after high school, I went to college in Kelowna. and kind of met the boys. Josh? I was uh, born in Kamloops, and my parents decided to move to Kelowna when I was in grade one or so, uh, just for my dad's work. And I lived around there. I lived in Calgary for a year when I was going to college for a year and came back. And Yeah, that's where I'm from. Uh, Kelowna's my kind of hometown is what I would consider. Okay. Dan! Yeah, uh, I was born in Saskatchewan, but lived in Abbotsford basically growing up. And uh, then I fucked off to Langley, and then I met these boys. <laughs> Okay. okay. What about Riley? I, w I was born in Abbotsford, where Daniel ended up going after Saskatchewan, which honestly was a qu probably a questionable move. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Abbotsford sucks shit. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, not, not a good. Not a good. Here's a not show. And we got Devin. <laughs> I was born in Kitimat, BC, which is like kind of northern BC, right on the coast. It's the end of the road. People say they drove through it. They're full of shit. The road ends. <laughs> We moved to Alberta for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I, I came back and met Jason at, uh, it was like a boot camp for the college he went to. We weren't in trouble or anything. It was just called a boot camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was a good kid most time. And then after I did some carpentry, moved down to Kelowna, started working with Jason, and then we moved to Col with new, moved to Vancouver short, like a couple of years after that. Yeah. Okay. When did the followers start? We originally, uh, with one other guy, the four of us, like Josh, Devin, and I, started a band called Toxic, which we rebranded from because fucking 
well, obviously that's whack. That's whack. <laughs> um, but that was in 2015. I think that was in later in 2015, was, like September yeah. kind of thing. And then by August 2016, we rebranded to the Followways, released our first single, and it actually like got on radio stuff in Kelowna, which was like, yeah, we felt pretty cool. Which is a cool story because you just knocked on my doors, like we're going to Andre's radio and talking. to Yeah, so like the, this is the way we got on the radio the first time. So I had an interview at Power 104, which is a rock radio station, a couple weeks prior. So I knew who like ran the station because I worked in radio for a couple of years. Okay. Um, and one day I saw I heard like Jasmine, the program director, was on on location at this Andre's place. And I knocked on them store and I had like my Beats headphones. Yeah. Like, Come on, buddy, we're going on a mission. And we just like show up to Andre's and I was like, hey, Jazz, remember me? And she's, yeah. like, she's like, oh God, oh, what does this mean? I was what like, yeah, say that? Like, you had an interview with me like not too long ago, but like, here's my band, listen to it. And then like two days later, they premiered it and it got like in rotation in Kelowna. This was I Got You, the song. And then it, like they gave her like an award at the end of the year for like, Best new song of 20, oh, 2016 yeah, or whatever. Yeah, was so on Jimmy right Lagoo's oh. new music review. Yeah, Jimmy Lagoo is a legend. Yeah, I love that guy. Cool. <laughs> we got some stories. Yeah, fuck you, do. And then when did you guys do the the big move to Vancouver? Uh, April. I moved down April 2017 by myself. And then I followed shortly after. And like Josh, July. Josh came like pretty quick after. Yeah, and then like I'm making them like August, September. That was I think it was October. It was. It was it pretty was, late. So yeah. I was in I was in Vancouver for almost like half a year before everybody moved down. Yeah. And basically right before I left, we solidified a new player and he was down to move to Vancouver. And like that took a while too. And yeah, I thought it was a bit of a process to get everybody down. And then once everybody was in Vancouver together, like we pay to go rehearse at places, but with all the setup time and shit, we were literally like, we were paying more to set up and tear down than we were for to actually like seventy five percent of it. Was and it was just, up. it was just a really shitty situation because like we never had like the time, like no time restraints, like do writing or anything like that. Right. And when when we actually got the house, was kind of when things started to fucking glue themselves together. Yeah, it started to work. <laughs> Like rehearsals, like we got we got really tight. What's the plan? Always when you uh Jay, when you moved to Vancouver, were you guys all in? Like we're all moving to Vancouver? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we had I think the last show we had was on April twentieth. It was a four twenty oh, show. 420. And yeah, we all had it planned out. So it was like, all right, you boys, like it was supposed to be in like the next two or three months, but like, you know, life happens. I, yeah. I had a physio thing. I had yeah, to Devin had a Devin had a thing with like his uh, rehabilitate like a work hardening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like he did the same flow until that was done, kind of thing. So it just ended up taking like, six to seven months for everybody to be down there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even really recall that time period for much. Like I don't remember it being too. Oh, too dude, it was all pretty, pretty like let's go. It was pretty stressful. I remember yeah. wild things during that time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember working yeah, at yeah. it. And How far is it from Vancouver to Kelowna? Four hours. Okay. Oh uh, yes, so this is like it's a that's a pretty hefty move. It's like yeah, it's it's, it's like you're going from the Okanagan to the uh, Lower Mainland, which is like it's definitely not the same area. Yeah, but um, I like the humidity here. Baby. I love the humidity here. I had a really hard time in like the Okanagan because it's so dry and it, it hurt my voice. Honestly, right. <clears throat> and then uh, okay, so that's this is like and when did you find the band house? The band house was late 2017. Okay. Yeah, it was November or something like that. It yeah. You and Justin and Sydney. And Sydney moved in. Yeah. Uh, and then I came in in January of 2018. The yeah. First, yeah. The first, first month of 2018. So we've had the place for what, two and a half years? And it was, yeah, it was supposed to get. So basically, the house that we moved into, it's a teardown house. So all the houses in the neighborhood are going to get uh, rebuilt as uh -huh. condos. But uh, they haven't been able to like approve the zoning and everything. So it was supposed to be eight months or nine months at the start. Now we've been here two and a half years. <laughs> but the landlord literally, when he gave me the walkthrough, he was like, dude, don't burn it down. And I don't care what you do. Except for playing as, outside. As long as, as, long as, you take, <laughs> as long as you take all your shit when you leave, like, that's that's great. You'll get you your damn shit back. Two and a half years later in the backyard. Dirty yeah, he never, he, he, never gave, he never gave me shit until we played Fall Out Boy Sugar. We're going down in the backyard. <laughs> Honestly, though, Frankie, there was dudes on the fucking fence yeah. in our neighbor's yard that were just, like, shirtless and like, yeah! <laughs> what are you playing again? You should tie your back on the open neighborhood. Was, yeah. 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 Shit. People were going crazy. It was great. Oh, Biggest that's crowd so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we got a call and my lad was like, dude, no. You can't please everybody, I'm buddy. sorry, bro, but yeah, you can't please everybody. So they, they just play said good things, but it's loud. 
<laughs> so that, this is actually a good segue now that we know a bit of the backstory as to why you guys are allowed to do whatever you want in the house. The wall. Yeah. Let's talk the about wall. the wall. <laughs> um, the wall kind of started at the first party. Um, it went a lot better than I thought it was going to go. There was like 150 people here through the night. Oh, yeah. That's what if not saying. more. Oh, it wow. was crazy. It was fucking insanity. It, it's a good person. But it basically started with like the, the bands that were playing. I was like, boys, oh, like sign your band name. Yeah. And then like, you know, drunk chicks would turn into drunk chicks and write stuff like, I eat I'm ass. famous. Or, uh, or, or I eat ass. Or, <laughs> or, 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 or I don't eat ass. ass. Or your party sucks. There's one that says yeah. your party sucks. That's my favorite, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's like, bro, our party does not suck. <laughs> That's honestly an EP. Our party sucks. That'd be a this great picture sucks. for an EP. Yeah, that was a pretty good party. Carl the cat. But I don't know. I guess uh, when we went through it, like, I called it the wall of shame. Dan called it the wall of fame. I guess it's, you know, however you look at it. I call it the wall. The wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think that's copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> are you guys uh finding that you're able to well it sounds like it's a it's pretty hard to get the five of you in a room at the same time but are you you're, at least you're not spending 75 percent of your time setting up and tearing down now everything's yeah. just yeah, and spending up. money up. no in that sense like when it comes to rehearsals like we do take it pretty seriously but it's like we'll be able to like schedule two rehearsals nicely every week between all of us and beyond that like all the schedules rally doesn't work nine to five at all Daniel and I get off a lot earlier than everybody else and just like finding more than two nights a week to like blend all of our schedules is really fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that we have the living room and we can just come here, turn up and nobody says a fucking word is... Well, sometimes yeah. you play at our house too. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to pack your gear around. Yeah, it's cool. Right. right. And uh, Riley yeah. and Dan, when are you guys moving in? Uh, <laughs> I probably... I probably won't be, but Daniel at some point, we, Daniel and I have like a living situation kind of similar to what they have. Um, Daniel's boss uh, owns like a mobile home kind of thing, like a really nicely finished trailer. And uh, we're actually living on his construction site where basically Jason and Daniel work. Okay. And uh, it's also, it's also a development property, but we're basically just living security and we pretty much pay nothing for rent for like a two bedroom. So why would you move? Uh, so like it's, it's a nice place to just, well, you know, there's a, there's a time limit on it. So yeah. There's, there's definitely a time limit on it. We but don't know. We don't know. Yeah. So, kind of like here, like they're like, Oh yeah. I, I prefer to move in before I get told to move in. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> at that point, it's like, is, are we, is this still happening? You know what I mean? But we, yeah, we don't even know. We don't even know if, like when you guys don't even know because look you guys were told eight months and then you've been here for two and a half years, yeah, two years. and we were also told a year but now we've been there over a year and a half yeah right so it's it's like, it's yeah right right well that that seems to be the case with like these pretty chill living situations it's like you don't know like your landlord could come tomorrow and be like all right guys the one, next yeah. week. the one thing that sucks about it is like you don't really know yeah. when they're gonna call you and be like yo you got two months <laughs> like yeah yeah you make sure you know where the u-haul stations are <laughs> <laughs> honestly two months is that, that, that uh, like that much. You know, it was like yeah. i would be like okay. Yeah. We don't have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> we got like we're gonna wake up and our the, our house will be moving. Like, <laughs> 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 Turn down the drum kit. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> we'll just gonna chop you the fuck we'll out. Just, I guess up. we're moving. We'll like wake up and we'll be like fucking sideways, <laughs> like going down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the lake house, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The good news is we're going to the lake house. The bad, bad news, news is, is how we're going. To the lake house. <laughs> <laughs> this is the lake house. <laughs> the lake house. Oh man, I love uh, that. Place. Your seat. Oh, how, how hard you can hold on. That's your seat. <laughs> Let's keep asking uh, Dan and Riley some stuff. How long have you guys been involved with the band now, officially? Uh, I want to say since New Year's. Yeah. New Year. Yeah, uh, so like, a, like a like a month before. Okay, so basically, backstory. I I know the fat followways because the followers. I know the fat followers. I know the followers. I know follow up boy pretty well. Why the fuck? Anyway, we 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 played a show together with my band uh, back in 
what year was it that like 20, 2017 probably really like 2016 yeah. 2017 yeah it was it was my band's uh like one of the first shows i played like in vancouver and they they were still living in Kelowna at the time mm-hmm. and we just kind of met through there so and we kind of like knew each other in passing like i went to a couple of their shows like i've seen them kind of progress over the years and then uh um, basically they lost their bass player and Daniel was one of my, um, students. Like I actually taught him for a while okay. and then we ended up becoming roommates. So that power dynamic shifted. Now <laughs> we just fucking hate each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, I saw that they were looking for a bass player. So I was like, here's his fucking chance to actually experience a real band. So I was like, Hey dude, go try out. And he's like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> it's so adorable. Like, like, yeah, so like, like, I was like, I was like, yeah, dude, you can, you fucking, you, you can fucking do it. I guarantee it. I was like, it's, it's fucking rock music. You can do it, man. And he's just like, he's like, okay. And I remember we were like in like a grocery store talking about it. No, no, no. <laughs> we were, we were, we were, we were getting groceries, and like I think this was after the rehearsal. He's like, he's like. Yeah, I think they really like me. And I'm just like, I'm just like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, you're fucking great, dude. And then, oh, and he's, he's huge. But, like, uh, <laughs> anyway, he's, he's, he's anyway. fucking killer, man. He's okay, awesome. okay, can I just add, can I just add my favorite part about this whole thing? <laughs> so, like, when I started working with Dan, like, I don't know, Dan just loves to share, like, the greatest things in life. One time we were in a Home Depot, and, like, we're walking through the aisles and stuff, and, like, Daniel stops me, and he's like, bro, this is the spot I messaged you from. You looked at the concrete mix and he's like, I'm fucking doing it. Yeah, actually, I was like, fuck it. It's like, I'm going to be late, but I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to be late. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, uh, some good stuff. But anyway, like, yeah, so he tried out and then obviously they let him in because he's fucking eight foot seven. Um, <laughs> I don't have those higher security now. So yeah. He's fucking huge, dude. like, trust me, wait till you meet him. But anyway, uh, so, and then at the time, uh, they were going through a transition of some members as well. And the new year show was coming up and I've seen Jason and them play so many times. And I was just like, Hey man, like if you need another guitar player to fill in, like for the new year's gig, like, you're like I, I love to see you just rip a mic man like just put the guitar down and just fucking rip a mic because he's got like a killer voice and I was like I'll step in and like I'll play a, a night with you guys and he's like kind of thought about it and then I guess bro just, I had nightmares about it yeah okay, I said I'd do it and I was like I can do this I can do this and then I'd later <laughs> and be like what the fuck am I gonna do on stage without a guitar <laughs> like seriously I stressed about it so hard and then like like three or four practices then I got like a little more comfortable with it. And yeah. Just like, I don't know. I'm just finding a group with it. I'm so glad I did it. Like, yeah. I mean, like, cause I, well, cause every time I've seen Jason play live, like with like, he just, he has so much fucking energy mm-hmm. as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like, I'm just like, man, like he fuck, like you cut your hand on your guitar all the time. You're just fucking bleeding all over the place. Yeah, dude, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you need to just fucking jump around like a crazy person and have a mic in your hand instead of a guitar, you know? And I'm just like, so I played the show with them anyway. And then uh, I was just kind of playing with them for a while without being set and then made the choice like a couple months ago. And we talked about it. And now I'm in the band. Huh. Woo. Cool. Woo. That's interesting. I, uh, because I've only seen the vid- live videos I've seen are the ones that were shot recently where that's yeah. what you're doing is just holding the mic. You look like you be- that's how you belong, dude. Like, that's what you should be doing for sure. It, it's funny because, like, yeah, like, the dynamic. Okay, so the dynamic between us three is, like, so well complemented by these two guys. Like, it's not to say that the other guys haven't, like, fit in well, but, like, it just it's bringing us in such a better place of, like, just being being more tight and, like, focusing on, like, the better things because some of the last guys have just kind of been out of control in instances and like toxic is a big thing and then it just creates dissonance in the band and it's but between us there's really no bullshit if somebody has a problem they fucking talk about it and like you know that's how, that's how it's got to be mm-hmm. you got to fucking like you just got to take it when you got to take it and like we move on from it and yeah. everything's a learning it's a really solid dynamic and when we're on stage too like I was telling the guys, like, man, if I just, like, got on stage for, like, an acoustic set, like, by myself, like, fuck, dude. I wouldn't have any confidence. Like, (laughs) when we're all on stage and I know that we're all confident in what we're doing and, like, we all lock in, like, that's, like, the most confidence that I have in my life ever. 
right. ever is like in those moments. There's no like uncertainty. There's no uncertainty. It's just like fucking let's do it. We're doing right. it. <laughs> kind of a random question like who's the most annoying person to live with <laughs> I, think, I think all of us would say all of us it, it's a bro oh, it's like that, that's like that bro you're gonna start meme. some fights <laughs> you, know you know that spider-man meme where like there's two spider-mans pointing at each other <laughs> yeah. yeah just like just like take that but like copy and paste like five <laughs> um, honestly I'll point honestly it's, it's, it's like when you live with somebody and like the fact that we can like the fact that we've done it it just shows the resilience mm-hmm. and, and what we're going for. Because like, I will tell you, like, it's not easy at times. And I can like, even just imagine YouTube, but like now think about us three plus another dude. Oh no, plus, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> Don't Perfect. For my brain, <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, it's just like, it's, I don't know if you can get through that, like with living with somebody and still putting up with their shit, then like you yeah. really fucking, you really care about that person, obviously. Because right. when you're in a band and living together, you're in a fucking relationship. You're literally yeah. family at that point. Yeah, right? yeah. These, yeah. Are, these are all my boyfriends. Yeah, I take all these guys out separately to rotate everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We just went over four. We're cute. Got them for your hoot stick. Thanks, buddy. This is my hoot stick. Hoot stick. Yeah, that's anyway. Uh, uh, anyway, Jason's a polygamist. Define um, <laughs> <laughs> <they're> polygamist. Help! <laughs> Help! Just like uh, what's that? What was that guy's name? The last thing you're like, Caleb. Free Caleb. Caleb, oh, if you're listening, wear a free Caleb. shirt. <laughs> Dude, we are uh, for sure. When you guys do come to Toronto, Caleb lives. Uh, oh God, where does that guy live? Not in Toronto. He lives a few hours away, but he will. For sure, I've spoken to him. He's like, I'm coming to Toronto when those guys come through. So you will get to meet Caleb. (laughs) And I'm not going to tell you anything about him because I want you to just to meet. He's going to be not what you expect at all. And he brings that energy that that he's just like one of the best guys I know. He's such a funny guy. Fuck yeah, man. I'm so excited. Fuck yeah. All set. That's rad. Where is Cooper? Where's Cooper? Cooper? Yeah. Cooper's right here by Devin. Okay. He's in the camera. He's been nibbling. Oh, what a dog. Whoa, okay, man. so Dev, what kind of dog is this? Ah! He is a German Shepherd, <laughs> Blue Stand. Healer, Border Collie mix. So he's like the best Shepherd mix. I could he loves get. to bite. He loves to bite. Yeah, he's, he's in hockey. that phase. And he loves Romaine. Yeah, my old dog is Blue Healer. So they're really smart. I love them. He can't keep his tongue in his mouth. We got him from Josh's cousin in uh, Smoky Lake, Alberta. Yeah, we drove uh, 14 so hours to go pick him up. Yeah, let's talk about that. 18 hour drive. 18 back. hours on the way back. <laughs> and this guy just slept the whole time. Yeah, dude. Yeah, this Cooper's guy's dope. like, Devin's like, it's in Edmonton. And then like the day we leave, he's like, no, oh. nah, it's not in Edmonton. <laughs> 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 it's not in Edmonton. Fuck you. I'm sorry, it's far. It's between Edmonton and Cold Lake. No, like, I would have done it. He's adorable, and there was like, I was going to do it regardless. It was so good. You probably would have just taken longer if I did it on my own because Jason did a lot of driving too. So is he coming with I you guys to Toronto? On the way back. Honestly, yeah, two yeah. hour shifts, boys, on tour, like that shit slaps. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Even if you feel like you can drive further, just be like, let's trade off. I drove. Yeah. They don't get fucked. They, they you don't, don't get, get to that out. point where you're groggy and like you make a little mistake and people are like, dude. <laughs> no. Dude. <laughs> are you impatient? Yeah. So, yeah, so. Why, uh, why, why would you go so far to get, to, to get him? Because he's the perfect dog. Okay. Dude. Good he's answer. He's free too. You're farm dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Anything for a deal, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, like, it, to, yeah. buy, to buy a dog like him, it is actually pretty expensive. Yeah. I've yeah. heard from people, it's like $2,000 for a dog like that. Okay. So, like, and he was the breed, exactly the breed I wanted, that I've been wanting for the last little while. So, Wicked, definitely man. worth it. I'm just asking so many questions because uh, my girlfriend and I are wanting to get a dog and we've been just fucking beating around the bush for so long. I'm like, let's just get a fucking dog. Let's do it. Yeah. He's a lot of work. Right? He's like a nice, like he's going to grow up to be like a nice medium sized dog too. Yeah. He's not awesome. going to be too big, but he won't be like a little fucking chihuahua that can get eaten by a hawk. So like yeah. the work that you put in is definitely wholesome. It's good for the soul, man. Yeah. I recommend it. Cool. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. So I guess we should talk about music, huh? Maybe. Maybe. Only if you want to. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? right. oh, no, we're not a band, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We're just friends. <laughs> we're just dog runners, bro. <laughs> the wall. <laughs> the wall. Yes. <laughs> this uh the, the new EP that just came out is not your first is this the first one as the fallaways or no, this is the second one. So the, the debut EP was the skittish. Yeah. And that was the three track EP that was released in twenty seventeen. Okay. Um, so this is technically our second, our follow-up EP. Okay, and is skittish, is that the, the cover from that? Is that that tattoo you got on your wrist? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was wondering yeah. what that was. Yeah. Looks really dope with the microphone in his hand, too. I haven't oh. tried it out yet because it's been no fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys can see that the rehearsal practice. Yeah. It looks good. <laughs> that's a fresh tattoo, then. That's a that's a new one. Uh, maybe a month and a half. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's fresh. Yeah, pretty fresh. And you went, fresh. did you and Dan go and get tattoos together? Yeah, so his girlfriend's a tattoo artist, Lumen Lumen Harris. Yeah. Oh, what's her name on Instagram? Lemon. Lemon. Uh, it's, 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 it's Lumen, Lumen Harris. Yeah. 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 She's great. Oh, Bounding Doe. Bounding Doe is, is, is her Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Okay. If you want to know, if you want to see examples, yeah, yeah. this is her portfolio. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Cool, man. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have a single tattoo of until he met her. And now he's covered. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he had, okay, when he joined the band, he had one tattoo, yeah. this Sofo Zeppelin tattoo. There you go. That's the only tattoo he had <laughs> fucking five months ago. No, that's not true. He had fucking choice on his tattoo. Okay, but the, the only one that you can see <laughs> on a daily basis. The fucking choice on his tattoo. Now his arm is one and a half percent. Yeah, I know that sounds good. Fucking choice. I don't need to no. see that. Oh, that's awesome. Let's talk Sunset Avenue. Um, yeah. So, released a couple of weeks ago now. What is it? It's the 30th today. July 17th it was released. Um, yeah, so for weeks. How, how, how has it been received so far? I'm, I can tell you all oh, my friends are listening to the like i was just talking to my buddy today he's like i've been listening to fall is all fucking week thanks a lot <laughs> yeah we uh like oh, our, yeah. our like honestly like thank you guys so much for like helping us with your plot because like we even in the last week like things have like been growing like quite a bit like Wicked. we when when we released the sunset app ep to give you an example we have nine just under a thousand monthly listeners we're at like 20 we're at 2200 now oh that's great um, man and one of the funniest things so like my personal favorite song of the EP is Feeling Low, and a lot of, like, the fans that interact with us a lot, like, they have said the same thing, so they mm -hmm. really like that, because it's a bit of a different side than just, like, the fucking straight-up punk rock shit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a lot more substance, but it's funny, because the one song that we weren't even sure if we wanted to put on there, Electric, that, okay. was, that, was, our, that was our throwaway song. Okay. So that was, like, our bonus, and then that shit gets added... Okay, Daniel, the night before, the night before it got added to a Spotify editorial playlist, we Daniel and I were at the boss's lake house and we're like, man, no how funny would it be if like that shit somehow like got us some traction? <laughs> and then the next morning I wake up with an email at like 6.50 a.m. and it's like, your song, Electric, has been added to Ready to Rock on Spotify. No and I just way. run into Daniel's room and I was like, Daniel! <laughs> I'm like, no yes, way! way we did that with our brains. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, we um, might have to play it live. <laughs> it's a fun Dude, song to play. So yeah, I fucking I love the I love the EP. I've been listening to it like my friends have all week. Um Feeling Low is Dude, Joshua, the drums on Feeling Low, when they when I first heard them, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like they they sound so big. Yeah, yeah I mean like, I, re I remember doing a recording of that in um just fucking monarch, monarch. 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 Oh no, monarch. Monarch. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was the same thing. Like, I so they like I play man-sized drums in that sense. Like, they're the drums themselves are big for drums, and okay. I don't know how but the sound from but just he's an amazing, amazing engineer. Yeah. Just, like, and they're Tom and Brasky, No, Carl the care. Oh, Carl. Okay. Um. So Carl mixed it. Carl engineered the drum day though, mm -hmm. but uh, it was kind of like Zach's production angle on it that kind of like. Cause we got it remixed from the guy that Zach originally had it mixed by, okay. um, by our main guy, Carl. But like the idea was always that like the song is like quiet and then it builds and like gets to this huge fucking chorus. It's pretty much the same chord progression same, over same and over, chorus, but it just yeah. like stacks shit up. Mm -hmm. And like awesome. when those drums come in, like there's no bass in that part when the drums first come in. So it's like, we needed to fill that space. I felt like with the production, it looks like, like a wave of that kick drum, like kind of driving it. Yeah. Uh, dude. Of the and then when it all like comes together, it's like, if it's a good system, it's like, dude, it yeah. sucks. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a banger, man. There's so many on here. Like electric's fucking awesome. Dumb is great. 
I think Dumb is the first song I heard from you guys when, uh, yeah, I think that's the first one. I just, well, it's the first one on the EP, but that was the first video I saw too. I also wanted to talk about the Feeling Low video. Like, that that's such a cool fucking video. How did you guys... Uh, that- so, oh, okay, so, so our really, one of our best friends, his name's Andrew Hunter, he's from Kelowna. He's always done mm-hmm. fucking legend, man. Oh, he's yeah. always done... Uh, he started out working for firepower which is like an edm label as a graphic designer because he just had like this next level like modern looking style okay. that he always goes for and we started doing some work with um fuck three three years ago two three years ago and like he just kind of like do do little things on the side for us but when i showed him feeling oh that was like the first time that he was like dude this song i like vibe with so hard like i want to do the video um and then we played a memorial skate jam show for his brother who passed away and we did that two years in a row yeah yeah two years and uh so his uh for the second time he's like if you guys come up like i'll just do a f- the video for feeling low at some point for free and like i just, I just really want to do it so we we're like hell yeah that sounds like a great deal so i think the actual video took place filming like 10 months after that was originally yeah. like agreed upon just because like we went through so many mix changes and stuff we weren't mm-hmm. sure what we wanted to do with the video and then with all the covid and, and stuff happening andrew messaged me one day and he's like i think i got this cool idea like let's get you guys looking sad boy in your rooms and then <clears throat> doing stuff like playing your instruments in front of the green screen and then what i can do is like make it look super 90s he used like a red hot chili peppers video for example i forget mm-hmm. which one it is but I, I like a green screen effect yeah, and yeah. it's super 90s like as 90s yeah. as you can get yeah. And so he really liked that. And then he was like, we don't even have to be in the same room because I can just get all these old uh, fucking projection TVs mm-hmm. and just put them, in, put them in a cool place and then just film all of that as they're all being played on time. So he basically got all the TVs together, got like the splitter. I think he had to get a new splitter because the one broke yeah. on him the day before filming. No, of course. And like he had to get it from a video player, convert it to, from digital yeah, to analog. I don't, I don't bunch of shit. <laughs> but he fucking got it done. And like, yeah. When I saw that video, I was like, I've never, I've never seen a concept like this. Like, it's so out of the box, but fucking cool. Yeah. He's, he's, he's an amazing dude. Cool. Super crazy guy. What's his name again? Say it nice and clear. Andrew Hunter. Andrew Hunter. Based out of? Kelowna, BC. Uh, Hypeworks is his uh, brand that he's yeah. going with right now. Hypeworks. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, dude, fucking, it was awesome. I fucking so, so that Andrew, Andrew did the Andrew did the lyric video for Let Go. I don't know if you saw that. Yep fucking insane yeah, one yeah, of the sickest lyric videos i've ever was, seen honestly yeah. when he sent me that i was like dude you didn't have to spend this much time on it like, <laughs> and then just like simple stuff like still alive he did that one too the lyric video which is like he just does like this simple little overlay with uh, the lyrics as it's kind of mm-hmm. going um but uh yeah i think uh feeling low is the third one he did for us yeah shit no he did six new ways six oh. new ways the debut video he did that too. That was the night. So we had this release party booked with Caribou Brewing when we were sponsored by Caribou. And Six New Ways was originally called Caribou. Just FYI. Okay. It was like a shout out to the beer company because we, we drank cheap beer to like so get by or whatever, you know. And then uh, we, we, shot, we shot this like epic video of us just fucking around with snowboards, drinking beer at this abandoned ski resort and like there's a bullet ball in there yeah it's, it's uh, pretty interesting <laughs> but uh, we had this release show book with caribou brewing and we didn't have the video finish until the night before and andrew was like i was stressing out because like andrew was like i'll get it done i'll get it done and we we're at his house and he's just editing it all together and stuff and like it turned out really sick but when we played it at the release party and immediately after it played the caribou rep came up to me and he's like yeah we can't support this <laughs> no because legally, legally, as a beer company, you can't endorse people actually drinking. Like, you can't see the liquid touching their lips. That's illegal right. for an uh, alcohol commercial. Right, right. And for our band, we had no fucking clue about this. So, you know, we were just like, ah! <laughs> oh, shit. So we added a little message a little in the front. That, yeah, a little disclaimer in the, in the start of the video. But, yeah. So when uh, when you guys say you were sponsored, what does, what does that mean? Was it, like, for the event or, like? just free no, beer I mean, for life like, or they basically provided us with beer and swag to give away for a long time so like we just Sick. got free beer probably for a couple of years even when we moved to vancouver yeah, we had like yeah, a rep in vancouver I remember seeing that, actually. and uh That's like, yeah they're pretty cool they're pretty rad for us so and then cool. we just kind of like one day they gave us malt liquor 
and really we drank it warm because it was like in a car at a venue at a show and it's like soup dog it's not good beer <laughs> soup dog. Soup dog. <laughs> so soup we dog. literally just kind of stopped getting in contact with them because we kind of were over their beer hey caribou give us some good beer <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like a hundred beer for one recording session. Yeah, Justin drank forty-eight of them in the first night, and he said he drank five. Is yeah, that you remember, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like five bros. Yeah, five bros, bro. <laughs> 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 um, Sucking gold. That's impressive. Kind so, of fucked up. Yeah. yeah. What songs did Zach Carper produce on the on the EP? Three of them. So. Dumb was the first one that like he kind of got interest when I sent him that song. Mm -hmm. Uh Still Alive and Feeling Low. And okay. honestly, his his favorite song was Still Alive. Okay. He was like, This is like he's like, people are gonna love this song. It's gonna be your fucking like you just you watch. So I'm watching. I'm watching. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and yeah, your the story on how you got him involved is very cool. Tell me how that happened. How did how did that come to be? Um, yeah, we were on kind of like a bender when we wrote Dumb. But uh, it just kind of came together one day towards the end, towards the decline of that uh, period of our lives. And then uh, Devin and I were still up the next morning. I think we had a couple drinks too. It was about 10 a.m. And I was like, dude, we need to send this song to Zach Carper because like, yeah, he, just he needs to produce the song. Like, cause we followed Fiddler for so long. And mm -hmm. it's just like, it's the perfect combination of like that party song with like a little bit of substance. He, to he's, it. he's like the producer that would get. Yeah, he's a producer so that would understand it, right? Yeah, yeah. And then absolutely. I messaged Zach when I was like half cut at like ten thirty in the morning, and was not really expecting a reply to be honest. And he messaged me back like that. He's like, "Hey, bro, so I, was good. I think what I sent him was, "Hey, man, like me and my full band are like coming to your show next week because they were playing in Vancouver." Uh, I got, we got this song that we think you need to produce. It's like, would you check it out? And he's like, dude, send it over. And like, I didn't have the demo recorded or anything. So I was just like, fucking shit, dude. <laughs> around for the next Ran around, I got my like interface hooked up. And I think I recorded like a half-assed version of like the first verse of Dumb and like the chorus. And I sent him that. And he was like, dude, hell yeah. Like, I fucking love this. Let's, uh, let's go for dinner when I'm in town before the show. And like, we'll talk about how we can make it happen and that's basically where it, where it went like all of a sudden we were having dinner with the guy i was gonna go see later that night which is pretty cool that's really dope man and yeah you said you, you guys have been following fiddler for like years yeah at this point, since right? i was like, in like grade 10 probably so like yeah 2010 ish sick dude that, like a while yeah so that, that's cool what was that what was that like working with him like did he have like outlandish ideas of like how uh how like to bring you sounds in or he definitely wasn't like approaching things like like it was obvious that he knew what he was doing in terms of like micing things up and like recording mm -hmm. and stuff like that but he was just so like go with the flow for the recording and like most producers that we've worked with before have like beat our asses in which like to be fair it shaped us up and like it made us better musicians right. in that sense yeah. but zach was like just one of the one of the guys and it was like a very organic process of making music, mm -hmm. which I honestly like. I, I enjoyed the fuck out of those three days. Yeah, same. He's got a really, he's got just a really good ear. He's got a good ear, and he's just like, yeah, he's a genius. Yeah, you know, like, like in the production techniques. Yeah, and it's not all mainstream stuff. He, he knows what he likes. It's in the underground. Yeah, yeah. and I respect that. Yeah, yeah for sure. And uh, where where was it recorded? <laughs> It was at Monarch Studios in Vancouver. Oh. So he flew up from LA and we recorded for three days. I think he was up here for four days. Yeah, he's here for next to the, or it was the day before. So yeah, the day before he came in, yeah. Sweet. And then what is everyone's favorite song on the EP? I'm Feeling Low, Jason, Josh. Uh, that's such a tough call, but like uh, one that really hits home for me is Still Alive. Yeah. Daniel? Feeling Low for sure. Riley? I don't have to do much of that song. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's between, mine's between Let Go and Alive. I just like Let Go, I like the riff, and then Alive, I just love the chorus. Devin? I like Let Go. It just sounds like a train coming down the tracks. Yeah. It's, it's, it is a fucking train. Shit. Uh, what's yours what's your favorite feeling low i like feeling low i like dumb a lot man when i heard dumb i it's funny because i i heard dumb and i was like 
this sounds kind of like Fiddler. Like I got that vibe from it. And then when I heard all yeah. the backstory, I was like, oh, that's why I like that song. <laughs> I've, been listening to, <laughs> I've been listening to Feeling Low quite a bit. I definitely like gravitate towards that, you know, especially when you're like not having the best day. It's a good song to listen to for sure. Yeah. Right? Dude, when I when I first went sober after we recorded with Zach, I was sober for like three months. And that song, like I would listen to and that would be like what like got me through the right. day. I was like, fucking wrote this shit <laughs> no it was, it, was, it was just like super real to me and like i, I love that that it has substance a lot yeah. of it so wait are, are you are you sober currently like is that i'm i've been drinking a bit but uh i've been definitely feeling it back in terms of partying because that's just you know i went down a pretty shitty path with it so but i've uh honestly it's been nice going to the uh the boss's lake house on the weekends because keeps you away from you all know, night. Like, at the night at the night we'll have a couple beers and like that's all i have access to and that's kind of just how, how I need to like make it make the step towards just yeah man, for sure plus I'm yeah. sure you know fucking working outside all day you don't have the energy to be partying all weekend yeah I know yeah. not at all it's like it really fucks you over if you, if you don't like take the time to yeah eat, right? yeah I uh I have a buddy so I do um part of my day job sometimes is uh doing renovations uh so I, I totally get that okay. idea of just like being so fucking tired at the end of the day one of my buddies though is superman and just somehow will still be able to go out and party and party until 4 a.m and then he's not on time but like he'll he'll be he'll be there in the morning <laughs> he shows, he shows up. up and yeah. like he, he up. works fucking harder than anyone i just don't i don't get it i don't get i'm i'm older too so like i don't know i don't uh i don't have that yeah. that youth anymore he's got a few yeah. years buddy. he's got a few years and he'll, he'll hit the plateau where he's like i can't yeah, do this exactly. shit anymore and that's kind of that's where I'm at right now, and it's just like you know, and we're, we're everywhere that like we're with everything that's happening with the band. It's just like I need to be straight to just fucking to figure it all out to keep up right. with it. Because like between between the day, day job, like working every fucking day, and coming home and like doing two and a half hours, three hours of band shit, like I'm beat right. after that. There's nothing. There's nothing else that I really have energy. Uh, even today, yeah, today we like packaged merch for like an hour and a half, and we got home and like had a bunch of phone calls. Yeah. And yeah. It's, well, one of uh, one of your new fans, Sierra, my friend, uh, she she was one of the winners. She just like texted me, texted yeah, me to yeah. let me know. She was like, "Oh, I can't believe I won! I'm so stoked!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all we already got them all packed up. We're on the ball. With this stuff, you know, if one winner that we're ship them out tomorrow. Going to head you back from yeah. us, but, uh, Everybody else, we figured like we weren't expecting to get like a hundred comments on it, but we got a hundred comments on it. So we figured like rather than giving one shirt away, we'll. Just do a yeah. few. We didn't want. Bunch of people. <laughs> Riley's just looking through it all now. <laughs> Who's the winner? Who's the winner? Yeah, let's get their names and addresses. Let's go. What were you listening to that inspired a lot of like the writing behind the songs on the EP? <laughs> well, Fiddler. Fiddler was a big influence at the time. Yeah, highly suspect. That's mm -hmm. I love. Man, honestly, like I think his just his style and like the way he carries himself, even in just his songs, is yeah, kind of like it's, he's such a fucking magnificent songwriter. I love those guys. That inspired Let Go pretty okay. heavily. Those guys, um, and like <laughs> I don't know. Like the thing is, when we write an EP like that, I like to just write really different songs. Like I don't want to do the same song twice. Right. You know what I mean? It's so, like. Electric, in my opinion, is like very Nickelback inspired because it's just kind of like a she's hot party song. Okay. And it's like, I don't know, Nickel Nickelback had a lot of stuff. Not to say that I fucking love Nickelback and like that's hey, man, Nickelback work, But they yeah. slap. Oh, they, they do. do. And, uh, and yeah, even one of the guys that we showed Electric to like said that. Um, and like Alive, I don't even know, Alive was like the most natural song that came out in like a minute. Okay. Honestly, that one was written like super quick, so I don't even know what that was. But yeah, yeah, and then like "Still Alive" was definitely inspired by Highly Suspect. If you know a song, uh, look up "Little One" by Highly Suspect. I was I was listening to that song a lot, and it's just like hitting me. It's a very like slow chord, uh, big chorus kind of yeah. song, which uh, I love the writing style of that. And then "Feeling Low" I think was inspired by pop songs. If I'm being uh -huh. honest. It was a very like it was. I didn't. I never thought it'd be a follow-up song, <laughs> but I sent it. To, I sent it to some of like my close friends who like usually don't really love our music because that's not really their style. But like when I set them feeling low, they're like this box. Nice, and that, that kind of made me like brought us our uh, our 
listeners. It broadens our spectrum of yeah, who's listening. Right, yeah, yeah, of course. That one intro riff for Let Go is a BB King kind of. Knockout. Oh, totally. <laughs> Dizzy yeah. Death Race. Dizzy Death. Oh yeah. yeah. Pretty good band. Fuck Violet yeah, Soho. Violet Soho. Dizzy Death Race. Big turn into Let Go. Okay. Yeah. Like those three, those three inspirations. So because I remember, I remember the chorus for Let Go. I was like, this sounds like a little bit like Violet Soho when we were jamming it. And uh, the intro, the day, 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 day yeah. sounds a little D- bit like DZ Death yeah. Race. But, like they got that like pushy, like bluesy, like um, heavy, vibe, heavy yeah. feel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Holly Suspect just in like the verse. It's, honestly, it's like these three different. It's funny when I look at it like that. Though. It's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. That's cool. Yeah, man. Fucking DZ Death Race. I. Uh, I got to see them perform right before COVID hit, actually. And holy fuck, those guys put on such a show. Gina works at Hearts, dude. I've never drank a beer so fast. Like when that three chorus hits, and I just like ran to the pit. <laughs> I got pushed onto the monitor. Man. I was at the front and I was just like on the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such yeah, a good such song. So good. Do you guys like all listen to different stuff or is it generally all? Uh, I think we all got. Have- very different like especially with riley and daniel there's like a lot of different dynamic because riley you listen to like a lot of progressive yeah like i I, stuff. I i listen to like like my my top bands are like coed and cambria and like i mean like more so on these guys side like rise against is like one of my all-time yeah. favorite fucking bands ever yeah. so, oh, yeah. so but uh, without going off the deep end and being a fucking nerd uh those are two bands <laughs> uh that i like and like okay. my my own band my my music is like way different for and I'm, i sing in my own stuff so it's way different than this so it's cool it's really nice what kind of uh style is that i don't even know like progressive rock it's heavier it's heavier yeah okay what about you josh um i kind of like i've got a broad range of music i mean i definitely like the punk 90s kind of early 2000s stuff is what i call home but everything from like funk to uh like fusion jazz rock kind of stuff i I like it all Mm -hmm. metal country sure whatever right as long as you get to it yeah (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Dev? Well, like I'm, I like a lot of like the punk stuff. Like Devin and I have very similar. Like, yeah, you're almost like more raw punk. With yeah, no effects. Like, like, uh, like no uh, Operation Ivy, that kind of stuff. Nice. But also like some kind of R and B stuff, like Black Bear kind of things. I like I like that kind of thing yeah. as well. Cool. And Dan? I I really dig like old school like Kings of Leon. Fuck yeah! Honestly, that shit yeah, slaps. Fucking so good. Fuck. Um, yeah, dude. Guys, boys. Learning like I, I still take uh, bass lessons and stuff, so I've been getting into Wolfpack too. That shit's funky as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> cool man. Wolfpack. Yeah. Wolfpack. Wolfpack. Oh yeah, yeah. Wolfpack. They're fucking. They're, they're 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 really like, get the crowd very harmonized cool. with each other. It's fucking <laughs> ridiculous. It's, it's, actually, it's actually like my my bass player in my band is actually Daniel's teacher. So that's why he's into the ball neck. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, dudes, I think that's so sweet. Nice. That's it. I think we did it. Uh, oh, Jay, yeah. actually, random question. Uh, where in Switzerland is are your parents from? Uh, it's a little town called Wittenbach. Actually, I think my dad was like Uber Uh I'm probably not pronouncing this very well. And my mom was more like Winterthur. Um, yeah, if you know that. And then I, I grew up... Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm half Swiss, too. So Wait, I know all of these places you're talking... You're I'm Swiss. Swiss? I'm Swiss. Woo! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's why we get along so well. Thank you. My God. Kuski. Yeah. We're, we're so hanging out. We're so... Uh, Oh, so wait, yeah. were you born in Switzerland, though? No. Okay, so when I say I'm Swiss, my dad is Swiss, and I've spent a number of summers in switzerland but i'm actually from south africa originally really? i grew up in south africa so you're cultured yeah your culture is fuck a little bit, fuck a little yeah, bit. Dude. that's rad but yeah man that's uh that's cool that's sweet yeah my dad's from uh like lucerne Damn, and, yeah. uh, i know all about the Sam. i don't have the proper pronunciations anymore though i have no idea what that is <laughs> <laughs> yeah Cool. Small world. Well, boys, thanks for the nice chat. I think this is coming out as a two-parter. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the longer yeah. interviews. There's I've a done lot of us sure. to share a lot of shit. Yeah. 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 Oh, no worries. Yeah. 
Fuck yeah. Well, thanks for having us, man. Yeah, thanks. We, uh, yeah, thanks, Frankie. Sure. All right, buddy. Have a good night.